The diagram shows two copper wires. Wire A has length L and wire B has length 3L. And wire A has diameter D and wire B has diameter 2D. The density of A is rho and we need to find density of B. A common mistake here would be to write the equation for density and then just pretend the mass M is constant and then have the equation for the volume of a cylinder. And we know that if we double the diameter, we're doubling the radius as well. So, and then that's getting squared. And then this is becoming times three. So that own total becomes times 14 at the, uh, times 12 at the bottom. So that's times one uh, 12th here. Okay, this is incorrect because you're assuming the mass is constant. The truth is, the, the key to answering this question is in this sentence here. The two copper wires, that means they're the same material, so it means that they have the same density. Okay, now we're asked to compare the mass of A and the mass of B. The mass of A is M, so we need to figure out the mass of B. So we're going to use this equation here. Now we can assume that density is constant because we're told it's the same material. So for volume, I'm going to put the equation in there like this. And again, this is becoming times 2. That's going to get squared. This is times 3. So in total, the effect would be the mass would be times 12 bigger for wire B, which makes sense. The two balls shown in the diagram have the same mass. Ball B is made from material which has twice the density compared to A. We need to give the ratio of the radius of B to the radius of A. I'm going to start with the density equation here. And I know that the, the shape is a sphere, so I'm going to use 4 over 3 pi r cubed and put that in there. I'm going to make the radius a subject of this equation because I want to figure out what's going to happen to the radius of B. Okay, so I'm going to bring the density down, bring the 3 up and the 4 down, bring the pi down to the other side there, and then cube root both sides. So now I can figure out what's going to happen when I change the density. So the density of B is 2 times bigger. And that's at the bottom of the equation and it's under a cube root. So that means that the radius of B will be cube root and then 2 like this, which is approximately times 0 0.8 smaller because it's more dense. The diagram shows a non-uniform rectangle block. The word non-uniform here means that the mass is not evenly spread out, so the density is changing across object. The cross-section area of this block is 8 centimeters squared, so that's this part here, and the length is 10 centimeters. The graph shows how the density of the block varies with length. Calculate the mass of the block. Okay, so I'm going to use this equation for mass, density, and volume here. The volume is going to equal the cross-section area times the length. So we know the length is 10 centimeters. I'm going to have to turn that into meters. And that the area is 8 centimeters squared. It will turn that into meters squared in a second. But what density do I use? Okay, so because the density is changing from 900 to 800, I can use the average. And it's changing in a linear way. So that's why I can take the average. So what I do is 900 plus 800 divided by 2. That gives me an average density of 850 kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, so I'm going to put that, I use that as a density and convert the centimeters squared into meters squared by dividing by 100 twice. Okay, so 100 squared there for each centimeter unit there. And then turn the centimeter, a uh, 10 centimeter length into meters as well, divided by 100. And that gives me a mass of 0 0.068 kilograms.